people of Reddit. What stupid rule at your work slash school backfired beautifully. Back in the early zeros, my high school implemented a policy that you had to wear your ID tag at all times. If you didn't have it on, you were sent home. So many students lost their ID tag to go grab food or skip a class. We were the only graduating class to wear them all four years. The policy ended soon after. My school had something similar, required IDs with provided lanyards. Failure to have it resulted in getting a shirt sticker from the office and a detention, which was aiding the custodial staff in the afternoon. Nobody liked this policy much. I worked at Starbucks for like 5 plus years before and during undergrad, and at one point our district manager thought it was a good idea to implement a just say yes policy, where we literally weren't allowed to tell the customer no. Lasted for about 3 months and, in that 3 months our run accounted product and waste went up over 300%, because when the post didn't have a way to punch in a customer request we had to just do it anyways. We also got complaints from stores in surrounding districts because they had angry customers who were requesting things that were against local food service code and told them that we did it for them at our store. I knew exactly how that policy was going to play out and I just laughed every time management was freaking out about the problems it was causing. Give me all the money in the cash register and make me a free iced coffee. Yes. Marry me. Guess I'll die. That's the spirit. My spouse's workplace realized they didn't have a policy about sending sexual images or jokes as part of their ML acceptable use policy, so they added it, except they made it a firing offense to send or receive sexual content, I think the intent was to stop people from subscribing to such content. They also said that your access would be immediately revoked until a determination was made. So someone got fired for something else and decided to send their whole management chain a graphically sexual image. Then report it using the anonymous tip line. It got the report. Concluded they did indeed receive sexual content. And it is required suspended all the involved ML accounts. Including the SVPs. The policy has since been reworded. There's burning bridges. And then there's drying up the lake. Just to fill it with gasoline. Damn. I'd assume that. If you get fired. They're not exactly going to give you a glowing recommendation. No recommendation not a huge deal. But I won't want people actively spreading my info and trying to blackball me either. The bottom floor of my secondary school was a square that had corridor all the way around. After some incident where a kid got knocked over, they implemented a one-way system. Unfortunately, they were very strict on enforcing it. If you accidentally walked past your class, you couldn't just turn around. They seemed very proud of their new rule. Until everyone started showing up late for class, because they had to do extra laps of the bottom floor. That's ridiculous. My daughter is experiencing this with covered one-way rules. They're only actually in school once, or twice a week between snow and hybrid so none of them know where the hell they're going. And if they miss, they have to go around again. That's ridiculous. A lot of covered stuff is turning into this kind of situation. They're well-meaning, but often poorly thought out rules. It's resulting in a lot of headaches. Today I bought a bunch of headsets for my daughter's English class. Because they basically teach online and off. So the kids are just sitting on a chroma book either way. And if they don't have headphones it's a mess. Of course half the kids forget headphones every day. Every shift. There's a quota we need to fulfill. And then. Even if you do fulfill it. You have to keep working until your 8 hours are up. Cue everyone speeding for 4 hours. Having a 3 hour lunch slash coffee break. Then slowly moving their ass for an hour. No rule about us taking necessary breaks. If we are still capable of reaching the quota. Now we are allowed to stop once we are done. Geez a 3 hour lunch break is one of the most amazing things I've heard. It gets really fucking boring. For about 3 months in my last job. I would have about 40 minutes work to do per 7. 5 hour shift. There's only so much time you can kill in an office building. This is my work life right now. We've reopened after COVID. But I'm at a different location and it's so slow. I have maybe an hour of actual work spread out over the whole 7. 5 hour day 5 days a week. It was fun at first. But now it's just depressing. I can't wait to transfer somewhere else. 
do you have the means of watching Netflix, or scanning Reddit, or working on your own project? Or can everyone see your screen? I can do all that. And have. The problem is it's been plus 6 months of goofing off almost all day every day. I work for a furniture store. The recently came out and said that everyone had to download a super invasive app and that it was 100% required. When they realized nobody was doing it, they said that's fine, but no cell phones allowed in the delivery vehicles. It's working great, because if we can't find a place oh well it goes back. We're out and just fucking off. Can't call us and ask us where we're at because we don't have phones. Wanna send us on a really long store trip? No clue where that is. They refuse to get us a GPS and send us out to bumfuck who knows where. Boss Bitchton complained that we all, welders and millwrights, took lunch and breaks whenever we felt like it, actually just when we got the chance and implemented a rule that if you didn't take your break slash lunch at the right time you didn't get them. Myself and another welder got sent to do a repair that was about a 2 hour drive from the shop first thing in the morning. Boss said it was going to be a quick fix, so we didn't bring our lunches. We needed the machine running as soon as possible, because it was costing a quarter of a million an hour for downtime. Turns out his quick fix was a pretty major welding job, and required us to completely rebuild a motor mount. The operator knew this, and had told the boss that was when needed to be done. Well guess what boss man? If you just let us take our lunches and breaks when we wanted, or had at least told us what the actual job was we wouldn't have driven 2 hours to the job. Done 1 hour of work. Driven another 2 hours back to the shop. Ate lunch at noon, like we were supposed to, and then driven 2 hours back to the job to finish it. TLDR. Boss's power trip cost over $1. 000. 000. 000 in a single day, so that we could eat our lunches on time. Head of ours at a manufacturing plant, hated me for some reason, and complained to my boss that I spend all my time in my office on my computer typing and looking at my screens, and I never go out onto the floor. Bitch I'm a fucking software engineer. What the hell do you expect me to do? My catholic school told us to leave space for angels while dancing at middle school dances. The theology teacher then told us angels have no physical form. Q lots of kids gleefully defending their attempts at dirty dancing. It was leave room for Jesus in Alabama. It was leave room for the Holy Spirit in Florida haha. <laughs> a long while back. But my school banned the color pink. Because a bunch of students were wearing it one October. And they thought it was a gang thing. It was for breast cancer awareness month. The rule didn't go well for them. My principal banned pink silicone bracelets. They were being sold in town to raise money for breast cancer. Six months later she had to have chemo to treat her breast cancer. It's not really funny, but it is kind of ironic. Edit. Yes she survived. I still see her around town on occasion. Full remission. Back to better health than before. Did she maybe already know she had cancer? And misguidedly banned them, because seeing it everywhere all day in her school made her remember and get sad. Oof. Hadn't thought of that. Maybe. Couldn't buy drinks at lunch with cash money. Had to buy some voucher. They were just cheaply made laminated pieces of paper. This was 2001. I was 13 and bored. Scanned the vouchers and printed them out on paper that kinda matched the color of the vouchers. And laminated them myself. They were horrible made and not even the right color on the backside. Also crudely cut out. I made about a hundred of them have passed them out after I tried paying with them for myself and encountered no problems. Made some new friends and upped production. Took them about three weeks to find out, but by then the fakes ones had intermingled with the real ones and had already been resold to students via the student office. About half of the vouchers sold were fakes. Drinks were cash only from then on. They had no choice to accept the fakes one for a little while longer though as they had sold and charged for some of them. LOL. Did this with the old Seattle bus passes, before they switched to the swipeable kind. The year long passes could cost as much as $300 or, you yeah, know, $1. 00 zero zero at the local kinkers to print off an entire page of them. I had a friend who just kept all of hers. Eventually they'd reuse the letter and color and she just used an old one edit. Kept her Seattle bus passes I mean. Letter instead of number. 
You can trade in old ones, past year, for new ones with my local bus company. This year they are using 2020 passes for all of 2021 instead of requiring trade in before February 15th. A place I used to work had a rule that executive level staff needed to be contactable when on leave. So they had a section on the leave form for the address of where you'd be staying and a contact number. Some knuckle shuffler in hours decided it applied to all staff and the shenanigans began. People would put down the address and phone number of sex shops, sports grounds, medical clinics. I gave the latitude and longitude of the place I was going camping and the UHF frequency channel my radio would be tuned to.